I camped in Central Oregon last night around the Maupin area and it got down to the low 30s last night. So I thought this was an excellent time to go over some things to help you stay warmer when you're camping in colder temperatures. There are a few things you can do before bed to keep you warmer overnight, including eating rich fatty foods right before you go to bed because your body is gonna burn all those calories overnight, which is gonna produce more heat, which is gonna keep you warmer. <laughs> also, force yourself to go to the bathroom before you crawl onto your sleeping bag. I know it's annoying, but the longer you wait to go to the bathroom when you need to pee, the more your body is going to reserve energy to keep your pee warm. I know it sounds weird, but it's a thing. <laughs> so you're sitting in your sleeping bag and you're freezing, but you need to pee. Just get up and pee. Just like countdown, three, two, one, go. <laughs> Not in your sleeping bag. <clears throat> we also wanna make sure that our body is as warm as it can be when we crawl into our sleeping bag because you are warming your sleeping bag. The sleeping bag is not warming you. AKA, we are the source of heat. The sleeping bag is just insulating us. So if you're freezing when you crawl into your sleeping bag, it's gonna take a whole lot longer for your body to produce enough heat to warm everything else up so that you feel warm. So if you run around in circles, do jumping jacks, not to the extent that you're sweating, but enough to get your blood flowing to get a little bit warmer before you crawl into your sleeping bag, it really, it's really gonna help. <laughs> Having a hot drink before bed doesn't hurt either. Remember that staying warm during the night is a combination of every single part of your sleep system. Just having a sleeping bag that's like rated down to zero degrees isn't gonna do you any good if your sleeping pad isn't insulated and if you don't have any extra insulation between you and the cold hard ground. <laughs> if you do plan on doing any super early season camping or late season camping, to an extent winter camping, but that's a whole other ball of wax. <laughs> I do recommend getting another layer of insulation to put between your sleeping pad and the ground. Preferably a closed cell foam mat is gonna do the best job for you, but you can also substitute a thin yoga mat for this. Any kind of extra insulation to put a layer between your sleeping pad and the ground is gonna help a ton. You can also try to get a sleeping pad that has a higher R value. Yes, they do make air sleeping pads with insulation in them. That's why they have a higher R value. Know that things like an Intex air mattress that you can get from Walmart isn't a super great idea for cold weather camping. All of the air that's trapped in that air mattress, and it's a lot of air, it gets cold a lot. It gets very cold. <laughs> and that in turn is going to transfer that cold to your body even through your sleeping bag. And it's not a good combo. I know from experience. This is where I camped last night. The bike is over there. It got so freaking cold last night, man. It's so cold. That sleeping bag is not, not doing the job, man. It, it is so, so worth it to invest in a sleeping pad that has a higher R value. If you're going to be doing any kind of like shoulder season camping. <laughs> You can also add a sleeping bag liner that's gonna help out a little bit. And it's also gonna keep your sleeping bag cleaner if you use a liner. <laughs> I would make sure that you have an insulating layer between you and the ground, like a closed cell foam mat or a thin yoga mat. And then make sure that your sleeping bag has a higher R value. And then maybe add a sleeping bag liner. And if all those things don't work to keep you warm, then I would upgrade your sleeping bag to a lower temperature rating. Unless you have like a 40 or a 50 degree bag, then I would, recommend upgrading your sleeping bag before you go out and try camp in 30 degree weather. But that's you, you do you. I'm a very cold sleeper. Staying warm is very important to me. I'm, I know that there are people out there that sleep a lot warmer than I do. So you do you, but that's what I recommend. <laughs> Another way to get a little bit extra warmth into your sleeping bag is to fill a Nalgene with hot water. I mean boiling because Nalgene's are thick enough that they'll be able to take that heat and <laughs> make sure you've got the cap on nice and tight. If you are concerned about it, you can put it in a Ziploc bag. So if the case that it does leak, 
it won't be all over your sleeping bag. And pop this into your sleeping bag to kind of pre-warm it before you crawl into bed. Assuming that you unpacked your sleeping bag when you got to camp to allow time for it to loft properly before you climb into it. That is also important. <laughs> but seriously, filling in Nalgene with hot water is going to keep you warm for a long time. I think I filled this with hot water at about 7 p.m. last night and it didn't lose its heat until like 1 or 2 in the morning. So that's... It's pretty darn good. Keep in mind that part of the reason that it can retain its heat so much is because it's in your sleeping bag, so it's also being insulated by all of your sleeping bag goodness. A lot of backpackers already know the trick with the hot water bottle, but I think more motorcyclists need to know about it. I know that we're all pretty dependent on hot hands, but I've been trying to kind of wean myself off of them. A, because they're something that you have to buy over and over again. B, because they they, t they create a lot of trash <laughs> and I don't want to deal with it. So the hot water bottle and a rechargeable hand warmers, mm, highly recommended. Once you get into your sleeping bag, it's important that your sleeping layers are not working against you. For example, pretty much any hiker or mountaineer will tell you sleeping in cotton when it's cold is not a great idea because the cotton's going to trap the moisture against your skin instead of pulling it away, which means you're going to get cold, potentially dangerously cold. <laughs> Try to sleep in layers like merino wool, silk, polyesters. It's also a good idea to have a set of clothes that are just dedicated to sleeping. That way when you get into camp and you're all sweaty from your day's ride, you can switch into your sleep clothes. They'll be nice and fresh. There won't be any moisture already pre-trapped in those fibers keeping you cold. <laughs> this goes for tops, bottoms, and a nice thick pair of socks, like a very, very thick pair of socks that you wouldn't normally like walk around in. <laughs> it is a common survival skill taught in hunter safety. And I believe a few of you said that this was taught to you in the military to fill your sleeping bag with as much insulation as possible as the temperature drops. So newspaper, your clothes, stuff like that. I prefer filling my sleeping bag with my clothes. For a long time, I took two puffy jackets, one to wear if it got too cold and one to wrap around my feet. I now only have to carry one puffy jacket because I bought myself a pair of down booties. Also, I cannot believe that it took me this long to upgrade to down booties. They are so worth it. Even though it got down to the low 30s last night, my feet were never cold. It was amazing. It's also just a great idea in general to put the clothes that you're going to wear the next day in your sleeping bag for the night with you so they're nice and warm when you put them on the next day and they're not ice cold. Also, now that you've done all this work to get the heat into the sleeping bag, it's important to try to keep as much heat in it as possible. And the big hole in our sleeping bag also happens to be where our head is. So think about bringing a beanie just for your head, gloves also recommended, and cinching down the hood of your sleeping bag as tightly as you can around your face. It's gonna help trap a lot of that heat into the sleeping bag that normally will escape through your head hole. <laughs> that, that totally makes sense. Yes, we're going with it. A lot of sleeping bags will come with kind of a neck curtain that you can cinch around your neck instead of having to cinch the whole mummy hood around your head because some people find that rather claustrophobic. Like me. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button. Huge shout out to my patrons who make these videos possible. For as little as $1 a month, you can get early access to these videos ad free before the rest of the world. If that's not up your alley, that is totally okay. I also have stickers, t-shirts, prints, all the good things with my motorcycle art on them over in my Etsy shop. If you cannot support me monetarily right now, that is absolutely okay. I appreciate you guys just for being here and watching these videos every single week. Question for my end screen crew. <laughs> what do you think is the lowest temperature you have ever camped in? Bonus points, if there was snow the next morning. <laughs> all right, you guys, I'll see you later. Even in the summertime, because it gets cold in the summertime, whether you're high desert, whether you're in the mountains, especially if you're in the mountains, it gets cold at night in the summertime too. Uh, it is so worth it to have a sleeping pet that has an R value. 
after the pilgrimage, that was like also one of the first things that I upgraded. <laughs> so you're not putting on ice cold shirt. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> a lot of higher end sleeping bags will have kind of like a neck curtain. How do I describe that? Neck shelf, neck curtain, little extra flap. <laughs> God, look at the lighting. This is so good besides the massive green that's coming off of my sleeping pad. How about that? Now we're just red. Red, green, red, green. This has been our lesson in reflective light. <laughs>